I had one goal in mind with this build and it was to see if we can get over 1 million damage per blue ball hit and after some sweaty nerd number crunching, we're finally hitting in the millions. Now we are using one very important item in order to achieve damage into the millions and that's the new Tau Raja ring that just came out. If you don't know about that ring yet, you can farm it from Varshan who is next to the Tree of Whispers and it has a pretty decent drop rate now. Tau Raja is required for this build because we're using multiple damage sources to maximize the damage multipliers that the ring can provide. We are damaging with lightning, fire, cold, and poison, so when all four damage multipliers kick in, that's when your damage can start creeping into the millions, and you can apply all four damage sources within a second, and you can keep those multipliers as long as you're hitting an enemy with any damage type. So you will see that damage increase basically 100% of the time. Most hits are typically between 500,000 and 800,000. And that depends on multiple factors, but some of your hits will be in the millions. Before we get into it, I wanna say something. I don't pump out content for views on a daily basis. I don't clickbait, and at best, I put out one video per week. And it's for good reason. When I release build videos, I make sure I've thoroughly tested it, and that takes a lot of time. I'm fully aware it's very time consuming. Changing builds, getting the correct aspects, uniques, etc., can be quite the chore. So everyone's time is important. I wouldn't want anyone to waste my time, and I'm not about to waste yours. Now, with that said, I feel this build is one of the highest damage ball sorcerer builds out at the moment, if not the highest. If this build piques your interest, then I recommend you watch the entire video. We're gonna go over skill tree points, gear, aspects, vampiric powers, gems, paragon points, glyphs, and most importantly, how our damage multipliers work so you fully understand where all of our damage is coming from. So please make sure you give the video a like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help the channel with the YouTube algorithms and it would be greatly appreciated. Let's start with the skill tree. Starting at the top of the skill tree, we start with the basic skills and we're putting two points in our flash. Technically, you can put two points anywhere you want. We're not using any basic skills. We need those two points to open up our core skills. Core skills, we got one point in the Frozen Orb and we move over to Destruction Frozen Orb. Now we also have one into Devastation and three into Elemental Dominance, along with one in the Chain Lightning and we move down to Destructive Chain Lightning. Taking a look at defensive skills, we got one point into Elemental Attunement, one in the Flame Shield, one into Teleport, three in the Glass Cannon. I like Glass Cannon a lot. Now, be fully aware, now, the more points you put into Glass Cannon, the more damage you will take. So if you are having a hard time surviving on those high-tier Nightmare Dungeons, you might want to take a look at this and take those points down just a notch. Just saying that for the new people that are trying out the Ball Sorcerer build, and if you're having a hard time surviving, 90 plus on those Nightmare Dungeons, take a look at Glass Cannon, dial it back a couple notches, and that'll help your survivability tremendously. Now we're also moving over to Ice Armor, put one point into there, and go over to Enhanced Ice Armor, so we actually gain Mana Regen when we have Ice Armor up. Congregation skills, we got one into Precision Magic, one into Align the Elements to open up the next two nodes, which are Mana Shield and Protection. We wanna put three points into each one of those nodes. We're gonna move over to Lightning Spear. Along with Lightning Spear, we have Invoked Lightning Spear. Very good reason for this. We want to stun enemies as often as possible, and when they are stunned, they are taking huge damage from us. So make sure you go with Invoked Lightning Spear. Mastery skills, we got five points in the ball lightning and we go down to wizard's ball lightning. Along with that, we have three points in the static discharge. So critical strikes with shock skills have up to a 15% chance to form a crackling energy, which synergizes perfectly with invigorating conduit. So upon absorbing your crackling energy, you gain 12 mana. So this is how you manage your mana regen. This is actually one way to help manage your mana regen, and it's actually quite important, so make sure you go with that. 
ultimate skills. We got one into permafrost, two into hoarfrost. We want to amplify that chill damage since we are slinging frozen orbs all over the place at all times. So this really helps with the overall damage. Now we move over to unstable currents. We go all the way down to supreme. We got one point in the course and currents to open up electrocution. And this is actually quite important for your survivability. Enemies deal 15% less damage for almost six seconds after you critically strike them. And along with that, we have convulsion. So shock skills have up to a 9% chance to stun enemies. Now we attack very, very fast. So you are basically stunning enemies all the time. Now we're moving over to the key passive and that key passive is overflowing energy. In regards to the skill bar and enchantments, we have ice armor, flame shield, teleport, unstable currents, lightning spear, and of course, ball lightning. Now moving over to enchantments, we have chain lightning and frozen orb. Taking a look at the gear and aspects. Now I'm using God Slayer. God Slayer is great for this build because you get a damage increase when you stun, freeze, or immobilize enemies. So this is really helpful in amplifying that damage. Now, if you happen to have Harley, that's great too. If you don't have either and you're just using a regular legendary helm, that's great also because we're attacking so fast, it's really not that big of a deal to have either unique. It does take the damage up a notch, but it's absolutely not necessary for this build. There's only one thing that's necessary, and that's the Tal Raja ring, and we'll get to that in a second. But if you don't have either of these uniques, just go with what you have and put down your aspect that gives you less damage when you crowd control enemies. On our chest piece, we're looking for total armor and damage reduction, along with the aspect that gives you more armor when you damage enemies. So this really helps with your survivability. Ideally with gloves, you're looking for a plus attack speed and up to a 5% chance to restore primary resources. You wanna get plus attack speed and primary resources on any of your gear that you can find. So if you need to re-roll your gear, definitely be looking for plus attack speed, plus primary resources. And along with that, we have the gravitational aspect which allows the balls to rotate around us. For pants, we're using Tybalt's Will. This is absolutely awesome for this build. You deal X percent increase in damage while unstoppable and for four seconds after. So when you become unstoppable, you also gain your primary resources back. So this is like a perfect fit for this build. If you don't have it yet, use what you have. As soon as this drops, slot it into your pants slot, and this will really help everything in terms of your build just feeling better overall. For boots, we use an Isu's Heirloom. If you don't have it yet, use what you have. As soon as it drops, slot it in. It really does help the overall feel of the build. In the weapon slot, we're using a wand. It's a very fast attack per second weapon. That's exactly what we want with a ball lightning build. Now, along with that, if you can get it, Make sure you're looking for damage to close enemies and damage to stun enemies specifically. Now, the aspect that we have here is you deal X percent damage to vulnerable enemies while you have a barrier. You have a barrier up almost all the time, so this is really beneficial in this slot. Now with our amulet, what you wanna be looking for is plus movement speed. Now you can get up to 26, 27% movement speed on your amulet, so definitely be looking for that. And I also have plus ranks of glass cannon. I think glass cannon is awesome. As long as you have the build built correctly, you can withstand the damage coming into you because you're constantly fortified, you constantly have a shield up, so you have a lot of defensive abilities going on. So the, the outgoing damage definitely outweighs the damage coming at you. So if you can, definitely get those plus ranks on glass cannon. And along with that, this is really important. We have the aspect when you critically strike with a core skills, Technically, we're not using a core skill, but what we have in the enchantment slot is frozen orb, and those things are slinging out all the time. So basically, you're guaranteed to get this attack speed bonus as soon as those frozen orbs go out. And again, the faster you're attacking, the more damage you're doing. Really important in the amulet slot. For our first ring, we want the aspect to have increased damage to immobilized, stunned, or frozen enemies. 
And of course, the other ring is Tal Raja. This is the star of this build. So you can get up to 99% damage increase. And how do we do that? So if you take a look at the top aspect on this ring, non-physical damage that goes up to 39% right there. So that's already 39%. So for each type of elemental damage you deal, and we are gonna be dealing four different types of elemental damage lightning fire cold poison that's going to add an additional up to 60 percent for four seconds and then when you're dealing any elemental damage it's always refreshing so this ring gives you 99 percent damage increase it's absolutely incredible for any sorceress build and in the focus slot, we go with the focus because it's, a, again, it's a very fast weapon. We want fast attack speed. And what ideally you're looking for here is lucky hit. You wanna have that chance to restore your primary resources as often as possible and resource generation along with the aspect, deal increased damage while you have a barrier active. And you have a barrier active just about 100% of the time. So that's a flat 25% damage increase. Vampiric power is now ravenous. This is awesome for the build. So basically, the faster you're moving, the faster you're attacking. And that's why I mentioned in the gear section, you want to have as much movement speed as possible because the faster you're moving, this is where you're getting the bonus to your attack speed from ravenous. So make sure you put ravenous in there. Along with ravenous, we have prey on the weak, increase the vulnerable damage. Now, enemies are vulnerable while they're affected by a vampiric curse. How do we apply that? We apply it with a cursed touch. It's a 44% chance to inflict that curse, but we're attacking so fast that it's basically 100%. You're always affecting all enemies all on the map. So every single enemy you encounter will be vulnerable. So those three are absolutely mandatory. Now, these two right here, we have infection and domination. So these two you want to have in place when you're trying to get the highest damage possible. Now, what I would recommend, and pay attention to this please, so if you are in high nightmare dungeons and you are struggling to survive, I would recommend you take out infection and take out domination and replace it with undying and Sanquine's Brace. Now, if you put these two in their place, you fortify yourself, you give yourself increased critical strike chance, and you heal yourself every time you are casting out your blue balls. So you are basically unkillable at this point. So if you don't need all that mega damage getting into the millions and you're struggling in those high nightmare dungeons, just replace those two with Sanquine's Brace and Undying. So in the starting Paragon board, we're going Elementalist. Now dealing fire, cold, or lightning damage to an enemy increases all damage you deal to them by 5% stacking per element. So this is a guaranteed 15% damage increase. And along with that, you're getting some non-physical damage increases and resistances to all elements. For the second Paragon board, we go with Enchantment Master and the glyph we're using is reinforced. So you gain a 15% damage reduction while you have an active barrier. And as we've discussed this a couple times, you're gonna have a barrier up almost all the time. So this is pretty much a guaranteed damage reduction for you, makes you more tanky. Also on top of that, you're getting more non-physical damage, more resistances, and more intelligence. For the third Paragon board, we got Ceaseless Conduit, and the glyph we are using is Destruction for a couple reasons. So critical strikes increase all damage the enemy takes from you by up to 12%. Now that's a guaranteed 12% bonus, and on top of that, we are increasing our critical strike damage by up to, as you can see, and this glyph isn't even maxed out, it's only at 15, and that's 163% critical strike damage increase. Hugely important for this build. For the fourth Paragon board, we have Ice Fall, and along with that, we're using the Glyph Territorial, so you gain additional damage reduction against close enemies, and close enemies take more damage from you. So this is actually perfect for a Ball Lightning build. 
For the fifth Paragon board, we have Frigid Fate along with the Glyph Adept. This is perfect for a ball lightning build. It actually increases your damage area by 20% and increases your mastery skill damage by a tremendous amount. For our final Paragon board, we have Static Surge and the Glyph we are using is Control. So we do increase damage to chilled or stunned or frozen enemies. So we're going to do all of that crowd controlling. And on top of that crowd control, we are doing amplified damage to crowd controlled enemies. So we have a ton of different amplifiers for a ton of different types of damage. That's how we're getting into the millions. That is going to wrap up the Blue Balls of Death Sorcerer build with the Tal Rasha Ring for Diablo 4. I want to thank each and every one of my subscribers. Thank you so much for the support. Now for the new viewers, if you guys enjoyed the video or learned something new, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, I reply to all comments as many as I can, or subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any future Diablo 4 videos. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm out.